SolidWorks 2017 added the Advanced Hole Tool, which lets you define and create holes that aren't found in the standard hole wizard toolbox, such as a hole that's a combination of a counterbore, straight tap, and countersink. In this example, I'll use the Advanced Hole Tool to create multiple holes in this model using the top and bottom faces of the rectangle. To better visualize the preview of the holes I'm about to create, let me apply a translucent plastic appearance to the faces. I'll control select all the faces of the block. And from the context menu, I'll expand the appearances drop down and select face. Next, I'll browse to the translucent plastic appearance, double click to select it, and click the green check to apply the appearance. The Advanced Hole tool can be found on the Features tab of the Command Manager, under the Hole Wizard Flyout menu, or under the Insert dropdown, under Features. With the Advanced Hole Property Manager active, you'll notice right away the near side flyout to the right of the Property Manager, which helps you pick the elements that make up an advanced hole. Under the Type tab, I'll select this top face to add it to the Near and Far Side Faces selection box, and a preview of the hole appears at the location where I selected the face. This initial preview shows only a temporary location for the hole, which will be set a little later on. In the Near Side flyout, you have the option to insert an element below the active element, insert an element above the active element, delete active elements after they've been created, and reverse the stack direction. You can see the first hole type defined here is a counterbore, but you can change it by expanding the dropdown and selecting a new hole type. I'll leave it set to counterbore. Next, I'll click the Insert Element Below Active Element icon to add a near side element to this advanced hole. And I'll set this hole type to a straight hole. To define the hole type on the opposite side, you first have to enable the far side checkbox. When I do, a selection box appears, and I can now select the bottom face of the model to use as the far side face. You can also see that the far side flyout was added beneath the near side flyout. Now that I have the element types defined, I can set the element specification. First, I'll set the specifications for the first element. To do this, I'll select the first element on the near side flyout to activate it. And in the Property Manager under Element Specifications, I can select what's standard to use, the hole type and size, and even use a custom sizing. For this example, I'll set the standard to ANSI inch and set the type to socket head cap screw and select a size of 3 8 of an inch and the preview updates. To set the element specifications for the second element, I'll select it from the flyout and you can see the element specification group box updates. I'll set the type to screw clearances. Set the size to 3 8 inch, normal fit, and end condition to a blind depth of 1 inch with a flat bottom end shape. To finish up the hole type options, I'll set the far side element to be a straight tapped thread, type to tapped hole, and size to 3 8 16. Notice that the preview updates to extend from the far side face to the end of the middle element because of the up to next element end condition. All that's left now is to position the hole. I'll switch over to the Positions tab, add a few sketch points, dimension the position of the holes, and click the green check, and the advanced holes are added.